Cool. Welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't done this in a while, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel a little bit rusty, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> the intro to our great podcast, Awakening yeah. Potential. It's been, yeah, a few months. Yeah, yeah, it's been a minute. We have this. I, I was telling Fiona about this. Actually, we had it. We have this interesting relationship where we're like connected for like a couple of weeks, pretty in- intensively, and then we go like a month or two, and we're like six threeing or three sixing yeah, our yeah, 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 our yeah. life, referencing the human design three. Uh, process but yeah oh for sure uh, <laughs> experimentation yeah and it just happened so uh i guess like randomly or un- unintentionally in mm-hmm. a sense uh and then i'm like yeah, like what the fuck is for you know i haven't <laughs> seen him for a while what we've been doing yeah 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 well i i just on the three process like in terms of human design the it's been such an interesting dynamic to like really get to know how that at least for me, having it unconscious works mm. like in the sense that it, it, it's very unexpected. Like it's, I'll, I'll be really into something or enjoying the experimentation with some new endeavor. Mm. And then it just, it's just like, yeah, onto the next, like it just ends and it's, there's like right. nothing in my body that says I want to continue it Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I saw something similar. I think I shared with you a post about the three, six, which is you, which is di- kind of different but it's kind of like that whole thing like oh i guess i'm doing this now kind of thing you know like it's just it's like not even a choice almost it's just yeah and i don't know it's great but when you resist it that's where it becomes confusing but if it's understood yeah true well i mean for me the resistance just becomes uh, i guess straight up like social norms or manners Mm, sure yeah (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. like sometimes i just feel like okay well this is done but just out of like maybe uh, uh, loyalty or uh, uh, not wanting to hurt the other person or whatever, mm-hmm. you're you're just like ah, okay, well, I'm just here now. But like in terms of like authenticity or authentically where where I am, I would know that that it's done. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I would say like that's the beauty of uh, like our relationship and our friendship in a sense is that there isn't. Uh, I guess there's a there's there's an acceptance of each of our nature. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So these sort of these like social norms sort of go go out the window in a, in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I guess keeping each other in the loop is nice, but it's it's not as necessary. Well, it just becomes more like efficient. Like you keep people in the loop with what needs to be kept in the loop with, right? And then the things that don't, it's like it, it's not as um, because if you're not taking things personally, then a lot of that, like you said, social norm yeah. dynamic or, you know, just kind of doesn't, it's just not there or it's not, ne- it's not as necessary because there's like a deeper understanding of the, of like the flows and rhythms of people's mm-hmm. mo- movements, mm-hmm. especially when you really know someone really connected, you're like in tune with their flows almost as much as you're in tune with your own or like you, mm. you have a sense of that. Right. Or maybe you're in similar flows. So then it just, it's just like really natural. Yeah. I was actually talking to someone about this um about mediumship so like i have a friend uh or mediumship this woman i know who's really uh, really um like she's a really a talented medium and remote viewer and like using those psychic powers or consciousness expansion to you know communicate with people who have passed or find things in the world you know like it's more well known now because the cia had admitted that they use remote viewing training for operatives Oh, so wow. that they could learn to like pinpoint where someone could be or a down plane or something like that. Okay. But she was, um, we were, we were talking about that topic, but then she was talk, telling me about, um, well, on some level, like say you want to communicate with someone who has passed, you would, could use like a telepathic form of communication, you know, where you mm-hmm. think of them and you're communicating with them through telepathy. But she was saying how, and I really experienced this with some people, telepathy is really natural. Like it's, it almost happens like all the time where like you're in a constant kind of communication or it's just far easier okay versus with some other people yeah and um and she was saying how like those people who it's really easier like part of your like soul collective like your extended soul family oh right versus other people who you don't you're not able to communicate as easily with they're not and that makes a lot of sense to me because i i've experienced that myself you know where some people it's just like it's so natural you're you're constantly communicating you don't even know it half the time you know versus some people you could be more 
uh, consciously focused on like, okay, I want to send this person a message or something like this. Right, 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 right. right, right. So it's kind of a, yeah, it's a more advanced topic, but I, I, I think a lot of people experience, I think more people experience this than, than, than uh, is commonly talked about. Okay. You know what I mean? Like maybe right. our parents and stuff like that. Yeah, right? actually I've, uh, I have clients that are, you know, they have houses and they live mm. in the suburbs and things like that. And, um, uh, they would ad- admit to me like some experiences that they've had mm. where you know, they have some sort of like psych experiences. You know, mm. and I'm just like, this is a suburban mother in a sense who isn't, uh, in a, in a, in a way like she's not living or part of this like spiritual community mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. She's uh, doing her government job or living her life in some, uh, quote unquote normal way yeah um and she has those experiences mm. so yeah i believe that it's it's way more common than we think yeah yeah and i, I just i mean people obviously fear judgment or whatever conversation yeah. but when like as the conversation's opened then yes people start to really consider like okay i have these extrasensory perceptions mm. that happen way more often than what is viewed to be normal or right. not crazy or whatever yeah, yeah yeah yeah. and yeah then those skill sets can be developed more so like because it's in my experience it's very much a skill like these different mm-hmm. uh, abilities i i had been um using it more in like attempting to help people find objects i find psychic like in a lot of the eastern traditions yeah the development of psychic power was always not frowned upon but it was pointed away from by a lot of masters because they viewed that to be a distraction from like true realization, you know, like abiding love. Yeah. Right. Where yeah, I can definitely see that. Right. And, and in the Western culture, it's like all about the development of like, right. you know, powers or you could say even like performance within the traditional personal mm-hmm. development world or sports world mm-hmm. is a form of that. You know, it's like, right. it's not so much about fulfillment. It's about performance. Mm-hmm. Right. It's changing. But, but uh, in the Eastern traditions, that was always like, core teaching like stop focusing on psychic power development and how like when you realize the nature of yourself as source or god whatever then those powers will just naturally manifest in the right timing right you know? because you're you're becoming omnipresent so then you know within the the right context whatever is necessary it's just going to naturally like flower mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and that's how i've experienced it too with people like say someone messaged me I had a friend messaging me recently looking for their dog mm. and I just got this sense um, like it's more humble that way rather than like trying to like go out and say, and oh, I have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have this power. Let me help yes. you kind of thing. Right. Yes. So yes. I, I had these a couple experiences where, you know, even simple things, losing their phone or right. losing a dog, um, you know, or other these types of objects and then able to locate it mm-hmm. essentially. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, it it was successful in those times versus other times where, yeah, like you, you try and attempt to do it from the mind or from, you know, I, I haven't really felt it so much from like approving, but more from like a like, oh, I, I could do that. Like, let me yes. t- tell them I could help, you know. Yes. Yes. And then it doesn't work in the same way or or you may get a sense of it, but it's not as like um, natural. No, because you know I mean? it's like it's. For me, at least, it feels like it's it's it's, it's got to flow out of you rather than like a contraction to get it. Yeah. You know, like oh, I'm gonna contract and use my powers or my focus, or whatever, sure. to get it. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's funny. Like a lot of uh, my clients actually before have uh, have told me that like, uh, oh, have you ever thought of like writing a book or becoming a life coach? and <laughs> yeah i was like whoa that's intense it's like, like trend number one trend number two you know? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like I'm, I'm so like resistant to the idea to be honest with you it's like mm. why because let's go with the idea of a life coach for example it's like who am i to tell anybody how to live their life sure all i'm really uh saying with my clients or anybody for that matter is um, my perspective mm. and um, guiding them to sort of trust themselves on in, in the same way that I've learned how to trust myself. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I grew up not trusting myself where every decision was like, oh, who told you to do this? You know, as, as, a, as a kid that I would uh-huh. make that decision. Um, 
and even think about that phrase but like who told you like i need some kind of like permission or, mm, mm. or, or some kind of like looking for authority mm. to take any kind of action um to now not being in that state not looking for that confirmation or authority or permission mm. to do something um and so just sharing the tools along the way that got me there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? yeah yeah and uh that flows out of me naturally and it, and it always has to flow out of me naturally because of um because i feel anytime i'm standing like okay i am the authority and i am the life coach and this is mm. what i have to teach you um because it's something that i'm like trying to grasp or trying to force it almost feels like um I would say there's just a higher chance of it being a projection. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, that's very accurate. Yeah. I, I feel that terminology of life coach is really just the reflection of that slight distortion. Not like, it's not the end of the world, people doing that, but it's, it's uh, yeah, like I find just maybe better terminology for it. Like, mm. like some sort of, because there is a usefulness in mentorship and guidance and of course. teaching, yeah. you know, but the the terminology life coach itself is is very much a symbol of the distortion within that whole the whole industry as a whole which mm. which like you said is very much filled with projection attitudes right right because there's not enough listening probably yeah. at the core you know it's like what do i have to say to this because when you think about it the, the relationship if someone's hiring you to be their life coach there is like an expectation right right immediately right. Yeah, and and then that's filled subconsciously and subconsciously through the exchange of money and through mm. you know the the, co- the context the container that's mm-hmm. set. So immediately the person who is the life coach, whether consciously or unconsciously, they are acknowledging it. There's a pressure. Yeah, that's there that yeah. can very quickly, uh, again, like you said, turn into projection. Because for instance, like say there's nothing to be said the life coach's mind is like, well, I have to say something like something right. has to be done yes. to, to, to improve this person's life. Right. So, but if, but maybe there's nothing actually that's necessary, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and I feel that's probably only developed in later stages, like that real listening, mm-hmm. you know, like that advanced level of listening, yeah. which is not really so advanced. It's very natural. But when you have so much going on right. <laughs> in your own right. personal life, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, there's yeah. no time to listen to anyone else's shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause you, you're still going on it in your own time, whatever. Right. So I feel that's the core because yeah, like, you know, mentorship guidance, all of that is all very useful. And that's a- a- essentially what life coaching is at the core. It can mm-hmm. be that we mm-hmm. could say, but yeah, then, you know, a lot of the, the time it, it may not be, I know. And I know I've, I've observed it in my own space of, touching into those realms, which never actually felt like correct. I remember years ago when I was doing that, okay, that more of that coaching. style, okay. you know, and, and then you're doing high ticket, a lot right. of high ticket stuff. And yeah. the high ticket is the biggest trend in that industry, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, for obvious reasons, but it's, it's just not sustainable. And I think I, I was reading something really interesting. It was a short post a woman made, and I've seen this so many times and I've shared the same viewpoint about the coaching industry kind of collapsing on itself over the next like year or two. Okay. Um, very much how like MLM and right. network marketing companies collapse, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. they grow fast and yes. huge and people, and many people do um, benefit, but then inevitably it has to collapse because mm-hmm. there's nothing really holding it together. Right, right. Right. Or it has to evolve. Like it will evolve into something else. Yeah. Um, and she was saying how, yeah, like she was just pointing out like the importance, the use of technology, like, uh, you know, group coaching elements or just lower price stuff that's more wider scale, you know, mm-hmm. like membership, yes. membership stuff's going off the chains right, right, now. Right, right. Tiers and whatever. Right. So you get the same access to the information, but a way lower cost. Yeah. And I've approached that a lot with the courses, like all the level one, two and three, all of the courses are all really affordable, but they're affordable in the sense that the amount of content you're getting is like oftentimes in what I've experienced with high ticket, like observing other people's high ticket programs or high ticket programs I enrolled in or what I previously was selling like mm-hmm. years ago, it's like not even a fraction of 
what I've seen in some of my programs or in some other programs that are really affordable for people. Right. That or free, a lot of free content to be honest yeah. on the internet, right? Yeah. That still could tower over in terms of value. Right. Like some ten thousand dollar program. Sure. And now just to play devil's advocate a little bit, mm. do you think that the high ticket offer does more for the client in a sense than the than the coach in the sense of um well now that I'm paying this amount of money, sure, I gotta be disciplined and consistent and I can't um uh I can't slack off or uh like if I paid for a fifty dollar core course uh even though it's much more affordable mm. um psychologically with the relationship of money or whatever it's like mm -hmm. oh it's 50 bucks it's whatever and so uh you might do it for a week or so and then you you're like okay well now that's in the, in the back burner and it's on to the next thing yeah no I, I think it's a valid point i've seen it so many times and i have observed it but i've observed the other side too mm. i think it's 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 relative to the person Right? right, it's definitely relative. Like their own self awareness. And yeah, because for some, for somebody, fifty dollars is a lot. For another right. person, it's like pennies. Yes, and yes. and I do, and I do, I do enjoy that approach in terms of flexibility of like pricing and value. You know, like in mm. terms of, um, you know, if you're going to be working with some CEO in the company and you're you're going to improve their bottom line by millions right. of dollars, right. then it, it does make sense to 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 receive like a, a value cut out of that. You know, yeah, actually, that's. To go on back to the like the, the industry of, of, of life coaching and, and the community that that we know and stuff, it's a lot of times I find that they're just like what's the the, the, the saying, like they're barking at the wrong tree sort of thing. Sure, yeah. Like you know, it's like yeah. you're uh you're trying to sell this like high ticket offer of like thousands of dollars to people like maybe in their like early twenties. It's like, what are you doing? Of course they're gonna um it's going to feel like such a big thing that they're trying to make this big purchase uh -huh. and it's filled with this big promise. And no matter what you have, it's not, you're not going to be able to deliver that. Like, cause if you're selling something that is like what $5,000 for a 21 year old who might not have seen $5,000 in their whole life, but there's in such a need and they have this existential crisis of just being 21 years old because mm -hmm. they're trying to figure shit out. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and they eventually trust in your program and they buy it no matter what you have, you're not going to be able, uh, to really like deliver and for them to feel satisfied. Sure. Sure. So I mean, the buyer's remorse is almost a guarantee. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends, you know, like what the approach is, who knows, like maybe it's an epic business course and then they make their money okay. back, you know? Yeah. So yeah. like, I guess it's it all always goes back to like return of investment. Yeah. I think it's all really relative. Like, you, you know what I mean? And I guess for myself in focusing more on detoxification, you know, more spiritual aspects, mm. you know, elements of like meditation and stuff like that, it's, it doesn't, it just doesn't align. If I was to do like some specific business programs with a business, you know, or, or some sort of consulting project that I've done before, right. then the benefit and the, and the value exchange just continues to stay balanced. Right. right? And right. so it's, I feel it's all relative. I just feel like we're pinpointing an element of the industry that potentially lacks in integrity or, or is, is, uh, you know, misaligned in, yeah. in like, um, I, I would say also just as, as well, it's, it's unconscious in integrity. Like they're sure, not sure. Yeah, yeah. aware that it's not integral that, yeah. that they're doing it. You know? Yeah. Well, it, it, that's the whole like MLM thing, right? Yeah. Like when you, when you like, if anyone's ever been in an MLM or network marketing like culture, mm -hmm. it's so convincing, right? <laughs> and everything that you do and everything you learn from the higher ups like convinces you to to do the same. Right. So right. if it's like coaches, coaching, coaches, coaching, coaches, mm -hmm. everyone views kind of the same thing, you know? Everyone should yes. be doing high ticket. Everyone should be selling in this way. Right, right. You know, uh, if someone needs to get a credit card to pay for a course like that's that means they're committed like it's right. all these kind of it, it's just another religion of beliefs yes right and yes. and it's okay in some level but when you really get into like a deeper compassion like a real like connectivity with things mm. the sensitivity starts to be more um not so black or white and not caught in any of those dogmas which yeah. doesn't mean we're not charging money and not receiving value for what is 
like honestly offered right but it's done in in just a balanced way like everything finds that like middle path yeah right where where yeah like it's circumstantial you're dealing with different people and different stages of their life and and i and the other thing too is i feel like one of the one of the most common business principles i ever learned from most business people i talked to that were successful was under promise and over deliver and mm-hmm. that was always, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of what happens, and I've, I've been guilty of this too, is in the industry where it's like flashy marketing or mm-hmm. the high ticket offer or that, it's the opposite. Yeah, it becomes overpromise, under the Right? right? Mm-hmm. And, and it's done so because, well, I think it's mainly done so because people are excited about this lifestyle right. and they want to live big and they want to yeah. have huge money for, for the lowest amount of output. Right. And... Um, live the friggin you know in, influencer yeah. life you know yeah. what i mean like Ballin'. yeah yeah right like but once i, I think this is uh, this is kind of a subset i don't know how many people will relate with this watching this because i feel a lot a lot of people watch these podcasts are you know in those deeper stages of their path a lot mm-hmm. of times okay. so the sensitivity is more there mm. you know because people are more devoted to like authentic awakening right, right? and i i'm i'm observing this in huge huge quantities now like in terms of not just like this topic that's kind of a bit distorted but you know things we've touched on about psychedelics or about bliss chaser or this yes. or that you know like it's becoming even a bigger discussion because now yeah. the influencers who are talking those in that frequency band are way more influential like their their followers are way bigger right. you know like the the impact that like they're connecting with celebrities now so like the, the reach is just going wild Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm noticing this like certain topics that are hitting mainstream that are like essentially in my view misguided on on in many regards in terms of like the the cost outweighs the benefit in terms of like what they're advocating for people mm-hmm. on a widespread and so it's just interesting to me because now it's hitting more mainstream so the impact is is the seriousness of the impact is stronger right you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. um. So I mean, each person is gonna have to find their path anyway. So it's it's all part of, it's all part of the whole, and it's all good. But it's just I just find it interesting because you know, like the coaching industry, the you know, like all all these little like niches of like trendy topics are all hitting, in my view, like a new level of exponential trending. Right. You know, and I think it's gonna continue, and it's gonna be. Why do you think that is? I, I just it's a natural consciousness awakening. You know, like okay. I feel it's frequency wise. The whole planet is raising mm-hmm. so it is a good sign you know i think everyone's coming into higher consciousness but then it's like anything you know like any sports business the more advanced you go the more serious things become and playful but mm-hmm. like the 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 risks of missteps are more uh like the consequences are far greater right you know what i mean right, like right, if you're doing a tightrope walk like few yes. feet versus at a skyscraper right it's like not even comparable right and yeah, yeah, yeah and that's how i that's how i view things and i think that's how anyone who's ever gone into a more authentic stage of their path like from all the masters we've learned from all the teachers that's why they all become more like direct and a bit more like strict serious with their teaching or with their what they like tolerate in terms of what they advocate because they know those those risks and the yeah. consequences are yeah. greater versus you know in far lower like not lower but earlier stages on the path things are advocating we don't um maybe take into account the consequences of what we're advocating right you know and and yeah. how that could have really affect someone like one one sentence of a recommendation could literally change somebody's entire yeah. trajectory right yeah. and i'm noticing this more and more now as i receive that karma from like 10 years of this work you know mm, right because you started at such an early age in this kind of uh-huh. uh, work so um um in a sense you matured with it and you've seen the consequences mm-hmm. whereas you know for me i would say that's one thing that i i somewhat feel lucky about is that i felt like the maturity be- came before the sure coaching sure. or the preaching or whatever yeah yeah um so uh not to say that there's not me- like mishaps or mistakes but they're just less you know like uh-huh. i see uh i see the consequence of 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 any action further further down than mm, uh, mm, mm. 
than most, right? Uh-huh. Where like maybe a regular person would be like, okay, well, I got this like a uh, new client or whatever. Now it's more money. Uh, for me, it's like, instead of thinking about the money, it's like, I'm, I'm thinking like, well, do I want to even deal with this person? <laughs> Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, or if they if they're, they're right for you, or if they're right, if you're a match or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I mean by that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> are they <laughs> so are, are they worthy? <laughs> are they worthy? Is this normie? <laughs> is this normie worthy? <laughs> <laughs> After I just made that post, remember I made that that post this week about the like uh, calling people sheep or something like that? Or oh, I don't know if yeah. you read that, but like yeah, yeah I did. on Facebook it went off, Instagram it, not so much, but like yeah, it was just funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's just another reason, like the on on the topic of the whole like sheep thing. It's people are always looking for a reason to feel special, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Of uh, well, I'm awakened and they're not. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or I've done the work and they're not. But like one of my favorite uh, quotes from the Da Vi Ching is that like a good man doesn't know that he's good. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's actually happened in my life. I'm going to sound like I'm tooting my own horn, but uh, <laughs> um, but I remember once for like a seminar in jiu-jitsu, we had this guy from Brazil come and whatever, and uh, he loved me and he hit it off. He hit it off and, uh, and then me and my jiu-jitsu coach and my friend later were all talking about it. And he, they were like, um, my friend was like, uh, the, the, the instructor like really liked you. And so the, from Brazil, and so my instructor was like, "Yeah, well, Ali's humble," uh, and and then I thought about it for a second. I'm like, "Oh yeah, I guess I am." Like, and then he started laughing, and he's like, "Oh, he doesn't see the the irony in that." Mm-hmm. But to me, it's like I can appreciate myself in a sense for humility because it's not that I'm trying. It's it's not a facade that I'm the the yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the humility is not a facade. It's just a natural. Mm. Um, it's just a natural act, a natural uh, expression, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and as well, it's a mix of that and me not believing in this character that I am in. Mm. You know, mm. I just happen to be this character in this planet and not taking life too seriously, so I can deassociate myself in that regard. So, because I can deassociate myself from myself in a way, mm. um, I can be like, "Oh shit, man, I am humble mm. and cool, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right?" Uh, um, yeah, I don't know where I was where I was uh, um, uh, going with that, but um, what were we talking about before that? Just all these specialness. All these specialness. <laughs> 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 we're just special i yeah. mean uh that's why we're doing this podcast you know we got, we got these cameras on us we got we're enlightened we got neo here to be enlightened actually, with us it's 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 um it's it's very paradoxical because I, I was oh a good man doesn't know that he's good right that's where the this whole thing is, is coming from but it's also very paradoxical that we are turning on these cameras <laughs> and having a microphone and be like People listen to us. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, I, I find that so... I find it... I laugh at myself so much, like... Like I was mentioning, too, on, like, previous lives, where I feel like I'm on, like, a street corner. Right. On, on live, you know what I mean? Like, I'm on a street corner, like, preaching to people. Yeah. And yeah. I just... Yeah, it was... I was going through that a lot. With, the equivalent of, like, the pastor on the Yeah, 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 whatever. yeah. I'm like, yo, everyone... And it feels like that, because people are just, like, coming through sometimes, you know? Right. And, and it's why I, like, Zoom more, because I feel like, well, the people who are there, like, actually want to be there they want to hear what i have to say so it feels like much more aligned and it's it's part of the reason why i've been through phases even though most people will look at me i'm not that quiet on social media but to me it's been a lot more quiet than ever this past year Mm. uh even though there's consistent sharing but it's like a lot of stuff i'm sharing like in stories i'm just like sharing screenshots of questions that i've answered and things like this or the posts i'm making are often just inspired by what people have come to message me Mm -hmm. Because I, I found it way more difficult than ever. Even though you're a manifester. Because you're a manifester, is your strategy is to initiate. Yeah, but it's like, it's in form. And, and I'll get into that in a second, because there's a lot of nuances with that that are not okay. as cut and dry. But like, for instance, a lot of this stuff in, in this regard, in terms of like, 
okay, someone asked me a question and I have to share what's going to be good for them and convince them of it in some regard. You know, mm -hmm. like I have to be able to educate and, and, and share it in a way that is going to convince someone to say, oh yeah, I can try that because I know it's going to be good for them. Right. Like in the sense, if, if that's in my integrity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I have that full channel in, in human design, the 4426, which is okay. sharing to the tribe what's going to be good for them and convincing them of it. Like the, oh, okay. the heart salesman, that's literally the term they oh, use. Oh, cool. Right? I love that. I so love that. that's a projected channel. Yeah. So even though I'm a manifester, that's a projected channel. So that has to be invited. I can't mm -hmm. just be running around trying to convince people right. on things that they're Everybody not. Everybody hates door, door salesman. Of course, right? right yeah. So that's a projected channel. Now, the core manifesting channel that I have for is a 44, 20, 45, 21. That's the money line. That's I come to the tribe and say, Hey, I have these resources. Mm -hmm. This I have these connects. I have these, uh, this investment. I have this, this thing for the tribe and let me direct it uh, in this way within the group. Right right? right. right. So for me, that's always been like sharing. Yeah. Knowledge, resources, te other teachers, sharing music. Mm -hmm. Like I viewed my DJing as that I'm basically just, I'm a radio DJ, really. I'm sharing right. what's the good music to people. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. Um, like, there's always been a center point in the community. I'm generally always going to be leading a community or having a small tribe around me. It's just inevitable. I can't, I can't mm -hmm. not have it. It's just, it just, that's the way it constantly happens. So in that way, there's an informing saying, I have, I have this, I have that. And, and this is where it's going. And this is where I'm distributing it. Yeah. Right. Versus the other style of, communicating what's going to be good for someone and what's new often what's new in the tribe mm -hmm. and and then kind of like marketing it to everyone saying hey like go try this right, right? so it's you can see it's like to two totally different ways of informing or it uh response or response to invitation like projected wise okay so okay. i've really actually noticed this nuance in my own being in the sense that um yeah, like, you know, you have all these YouTubers and all these people putting out content constantly, like they're sitting in front of a video and they're, you know, doing it. And mm -hmm. I used to do that a lot and it was more natural, but now it's, it's, it's quite a lot more challenging, I find, to get in the mode. Like sometimes I can get in the rhythm, like I, last week it, it, it flowed, but usually it's going to be sparked by something in my environment mm -hmm. that's informing something. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, I can engage that topic and, you know, right. cause otherwise there's so much silence and so much peace that I'm not really in a place where I need to, I, right. like, I feel me, I need to be out there like convincing people on these topics yeah. unless I really feel this like inner move, yeah. you know? So I think it's more, it's not that there isn't an informing, it's just the spaciousness between mm. is a lot more, mm -hmm. right? Which also could be related to innocence motivation, right? Because yeah. as soon as I get in the mode where like, I see this guy's, you know, YouTube channel. I'm like, yo, I could easily do that. Mm -hmm. And then I start getting in the mall. I'm going to make videos every day. And then immediately I start feeling the resistance. Yeah. Like it's like, okay. it's just, this doesn't like, yeah, I could do it. I, no doubt. I could fucking list a hundred topics and do a hundred videos. Right, you know right. what I mean? Um, and maybe that's gonna, maybe I'll feel innocently inspired to do that at some point. Sure. Um, but the moment it's coming from a place where it's like, it's like a means to an end you know mm. i'm gonna do all these videos yeah it's gonna help people rather it's gonna than, build a channel rather it's than gonna... creating art for art's sake that's it okay. right so i think it's uh and that's been a lot of the change in my process even how i share where like you know although people may look you know me as a teacher or guru or these types of terms but I used to live that energy more. I felt years ago, whereas now mm -hmm. it's it's. I've worked more and more on dissolving those those elements within my being. Right, right. So the sharing I feel comes way more. It's way more innocently and and um, just this is my experience. This is what I'm experiencing. Right, so right. it's it's more of a documentation of my own life, mm -hmm. and that's where I feel actually as a six three. That's where I feel most at home. Like yeah. when when people, even though I run courses and stuff, I, I try and put it put it together in a way where I. I'm not having to like micromanage someone's life. Like yeah. where they're asking me, yeah. Oh, what do I do for this? It's like, yo, I don't even actually want to tell you what I did. Oh, I will tell you what I did. I don't want to tell you what to do. Right. I don't like, unless you have a very specific question, Yeah. then yeah, that may come. But so I, uh, there's times where I just, I'm like, I feel this, like my, like my Contraction. whole body contracts yeah. when they're yeah. like, what meditation should I do? I'm like, yo, I don't fucking know. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. I do, I do, I can recommend some core, you know? Yeah. yeah so yeah, I, yeah. I still do it, but I find six, three vibes is very much like, 
I just li- I've lived this life and I'm going to mm-hmm. continue living this life and I'm just going to sit here and tell you about it and 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 be the example of what it is. Mm-hmm. But if you're at looking for me to like really pinpoint every se- every step for you and all that like it's not, it's just not it's not Well, there's no powerful. empowering for that, right? You know and like I mean it could be, but it's going to be someone else's role. At least it's not my role, but it's there okay. I think there there can be people who like I know some some people who are I think very pinpoint in their ability to describe like exact processes and stages and steps Mm -hmm. and i can do that too but it's much more going to be from a place of this is what worked from within my own experience yes yes. and i think that's actually like yeah coming to that point of empowerment i do feel like that's one of the more powerful ways yeah because if the teachings are available like we have the teachings available like freedom teachings high level buddhist work Mm -hmm. you know like there's a lot of really high quality teachings that have already been laid out Mm -hmm. i feel like people have to put in more of their own practice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's right there. Like just put it to work. Right. You know what I mean? Like put it into practice, then ask your questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Cause a lot of the questions dissolve once you start to practice, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <So> well. <laughs> yeah, like there's, there's an old saying of like the, the mm-hmm. successful people don't make the right decisions. They make their decisions. Right. Oh yeah. Cool. Right. Which mm-hmm. means like, you pick something and you stick with it, mm-hmm. right? Don't get like too involved of, of, is this the right thing or is this the right thing or is this the? It's just like mm-hmm. pick something and 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 roll with it. And when you do, like the clouds really just disappears. All these like endless questions that you have in uh, in the mind, they just yeah really dissolve because you realize they're they either an- are answered. Or they're not necessary. Yeah, yeah. It's so true, man. So, I, I was talking to this a few days yesterday, uh, or a few days ago, where well, I was talking to her about a technique I've used for, like, yes or no questions. Often, oh, where, like, okay. I'm asking myself a yes or no question. Am I going to do this, do that? You know, is this right? Is this not? Whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll usually be able to feel, like, a contraction for no or an openness for yes. Oh. And But the thing is, is my authority in at least human design reference is not sacral. So okay. it's not necessarily um, always accurate. However, what I do notice is that a lot of times, if there's like an intensity with wanting to ask those questions, it's it's usually meaning actually that it's unnecessary to ask ah. because it's, you know, open head vibes, trying to sure. like think about things that don't matter, right. question things that have nothing to do with you yeah. or have no real bearing on your path, right? right? right. Because like so many, you know, in non-dual community, non-dual, non-dual community is a lot about like, you know, there's nothing you can do. There's no self. Things are going to mm-hmm. happen uh, with or without you kind of thing. Like right. that the path is going to unfold. And while I, I I simultaneously view that there is, you know, absolutely free will mm-hmm. and absolutely a destined unfolding. When I look at the, the destined aspect of it, or even not even that, like actually melding the two. I was giving an example the, uh, the other day where I was like, I was explaining how uh, times where simple times where this was just so real, like in terms of like, divine timing things just happening as they're supposed to and you can't really avoid it right it's like i'm at the park doing some some pull-ups and then i just naturally get the sense like go home and then i'm like uh so i um, i kind of like shrug shrug it off or like okay i'm just gonna do another set do another set and get the feeling again like just go home okay so i start walking home and then i walk up the stairs and then the the uber guys bring in the food in for rain and her mom and um and uh and yeah. then her, her 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 mom comes down. And she's gonna play pay debit, and then she doesn't. He doesn't have the machine, oh. right? And he's like, "Oh well, I have to go back. It's like thirty minutes, like, you know." And I had forty bucks in my in my pocket. Just right. I was holding cash for some reason, and then I just gave it to him. And then you know, it's like simple, done. Right. And then we walk up. It was like you know, it couldn't have been more perfect in timing yeah. because it was, it was literally like these guys are quick. You know, they're in right. and out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, I can give so many examples of that type of thing, but mm-hmm. that's the one that came to mind. But it's, it's like that type of idea, right? Where th- things th- things just happen so naturally. Like everything happens so naturally. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't require so much of the, is it this or is it that? Or is it, you know, and generally if that's what's happening, it's just so irrelevant. Like it doesn't matter. Right. Because if it's meant to happen, you're going to find your way to that scenario or situation. Yeah. And if it's not, then, well, it's not. It's not. And it just didn't happen anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that's hard for... A lot of people to grasp, especially because the initial layers of a lot of spirituality and personal development is empowerment based. And mm-hmm. for a lot of people, that's not empowering, right? Like the idea that 
things can just happen naturally. They want to like most people want to be in a lot more control than that, right? Like, is, is it though? Because I well, mean, I I don't think I think it's very empowering, but yeah. I know I, I I feel like from the vantage point of like manifesting my desires and I you know I create my reality and yes, a lot of these types of ways. Yeah, although they're true, they're true like within the the context that you're flowing down In, a path yeah. of a river yes so th the river doesn't just magically like go up onto the right. the forest you know what i mean yeah, unless yeah, that's yeah. like a a real karmic sway like say mm -hmm. some boulder i don't know like you yeah. know what i mean but it's so it in my view it's extremely empowering because you actually trust life way more yeah and then you feel more confident in that trust right because you're like well if things are just going to happen then i can really commit to these actions and how i'm engaging Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen the way it's going to happen. And I'm, and then I'm also going to get the signal in my being, in my body to tell me what's up if it's right. not cor correct or yeah. aligned or on yeah. the path or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so yeah, yeah. Paradoxically, it's very empowering, but it's maybe scary. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, what's so, what's, uh, I don't know. Like to me, to me, like there's, there's, there's actually nothing more empowering than, than to realize, um, the the control is not necessary mm -hmm. right it's uh, it 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 is faith and trust in the universe and in yourself and and, and so on but paradoxically it's very it's very empowering because there's so much ease in life and being that mm right mm. it's like oh instead of um resisting to uh and trying to resisting what life is and mm. trying to mold it into something else you simultaneously accept what life is at this present moment while going to uh your desired mm -hmm. uh whatever thing that you want to manifest mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so uh, that letting go of the control requires uh, some humility to know where you're at. Mm. Right? It's like, um, I remember studying personal development stuff and whatever. Uh, uh, one of the things that we're taught is like, you got to know your starting point and your destination. Mm. And that we'd all agree that it would be foolish to tell yourself that, um, uh, that you're going from like New York uh, to LA when in fact you're in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. you're needing to yeah, go yeah, to LA, for sure. Right, and really knowing your starting point requires a lot of letting go. Mm. True. Yeah. 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 It reminds me of like advanced chaotics in the sense that like um, like one big popular topic in freedom teachings is like knowing your race line, like where you're from, mm -hmm. you know, and. So everyone obviously wants to be from like these like great angelic like races, right. but sometimes you're not from these specific groups or you're, yes. you're, you're a part of a group that's actually has like a, not a great rap right. and right. you're on a different contract or whatever. And yeah. it's more of a mass discussion, but it's so, that's what I was reminded of because it can be so easy just to like be self-deceptive, mm. you know, in grandiosity or like imagination essentially right. yeah, 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 and yeah. not acknowledging like what's actually like real mm -hmm. and and more specifically like what is actually um desired like what is the real yes what are your true authentic desires yeah right? yeah like the reason that i put um like peace before wealth as my like values of, of success is because i realized like money without emotional maturity is like a kid at a candy store mm -hmm. like you'll just want to grab everything and get everything and and there's uh uh, because the void within hasn't been addressed, mm -hmm. you're trying to fill it from the from the outside, and so many of your desires and uh, and and the things that you're acquiring are not really things that you actually want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you want them, right? But um, it's it's more so it's not an authentic desire because it's more more of a distraction. Yeah, that yeah gets you away from yourself. Whereas if you recognize that peace. And authenticity is number one, then you know what are my authentic desires. Mm. And so if you know what are my authentic desires, then you can, in a sense, afford to be rich. 
Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that's so accurate. Because I, I, the way I see it visually is how I've, I've often looked at this in my own path of like, case when I mentioned, okay, I've been teaching for 10 years, but mm -hmm. I've, I've said this over the past year, like I've only actually felt really ready to share things over the past like year and a half. Mm. Like, even though many people benefit over that time, there was uh, so many distractions and so many like slip ups in that period mm -hmm. that could have, you know, it's, it was part of my path, but it was like when I look at like an exponential curve that takes a long time, you know, for that climb to yeah. for that exponential peak to hit Yeah, where it's like, oh, like that's still unfolding. But during that, it's almost like these attempts to like jump, like pre yeah. pre jump, you know what I mean? Yeah, like you're yeah, not, yeah. you're nowhere near ready for that. Right. It's like the equivalent of a plane trying to take off. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like this gigantic plane, this guy's like, it's like a new plane. He's like, yeah. <laughs> nope, not now. He's like, oh shit, oh shit. Let me try again. <laughs> yeah, man, that's so, it's just such an accurate visualization because yeah. that's that's how I've seen, like that's how I reflected a lot with like the psychedelic movement. Like mm -hmm. I've all, I've talked about like peak chasing or bliss chasing. That's basically what it is. Right. It's kind of like you're you're too much too soon. You're you're ahead of yourself of where you're actually even ready to be mm. and creating this entire world uh, of imagination around you to, yes. to create the illusion that you're right. But, and that's, I guess that's probably what happens. A lot of like celebrities or, you know, 100%, people. hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think that's why like Frank Yang or whatever said, like if I had the choice between like being enlightened or being famous and rich, I'd choose enlightenment because mm -hmm. of that, you know, and, uh, to uh, bring it back full circle, that's why uh, letting go um, is the most empowering thing that you can do. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're not like uh, trying to <laughs> plane, take off too early. Well, I, and it reminds me of I was talking to, uh, uh, well, I posted his music this week, Dream State Logic. He's like one of my favorite, like ambient, um, okay. cosmic, um, I don't know, certain terms like i guess ambient would be the the best term for it, like spacey ambient style okay. music okay you know the meditative cosmic style um electronic music so beautiful just like a digital sound journey almost you know okay and uh and he just he reminded me of this because you know he's so talented like his music in my view is one of the best in the whole the whole of that space uh, but he was talking about, you know, st you know, still working his regular job. Oh, I hope he's down with me sharing this. I know, I know he would be, but, um, you know, he has a regular job and he's, he's slowly wanting to move out of it and taking those steps. And to me, I respect that so much now having for me done it more prematurely, like where mm. I didn't want a job, didn't want anything. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to like yeah. everything so quick. Mm -hmm. But when I look at someone like that, it's like you develop such a strong foundation yeah. where you've let your talent and skill kind of like find a middle ground over like an extended period of time right where now like at any point that you finally decide or it decides for you to like take that next step yeah like it's just it's that natural mm -hmm. you know and who knows how his path has been I, I don't know him that well but it just I've, I know I've known quite a few people like that I think I've known them more and more over the past few years because it, I've come into that myself more mm -hmm. of like that patient humility. Mm -hmm. But when I look at, like, I've talked about this often, like certain mentors I have that nobody would know their name. Like, and to me, they've been some of the most impactful spiritual mentors I've ever had, mm -hmm. but n they're like, nobody's within the scene of spiritual teaching or, mm -hmm. you know, not that they won't be, I think they will be huge mm -hmm. eventually uh, if they want to. Um, but again, it's like that, that, that humble foundation where you're developing for the long term, like your relationships, your the, the respect people have with you yes like your real your your results in impact are are not coming with any taint it's it's yeah it's it's it, uh, yeah you're not damaging your reputation all those kind of things and it's because you're not uh you're patient enough not to need desperate measures mm. Mm. right that's yes yeah. really like what it comes down to yeah it's like uh letting go or, or not needing control is so empowering because when you're so desperate for that control and that kind of stuff, you actually go for those desperate measures to, uh, to achieve mm. the, your desired manifestation. Or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you have that patient humility, 
and you're just like slowly transitioning from you know with a company to self-employed and so on it happens so um uh, in a sense so smoothly and naturally that it's it almost feels like just another day yeah yeah well it's probably it's what happened to you i guess yeah like, recently yeah 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 yeah, I feel I, it's like it's applicable in anything, you know. I mean, it's not just another day because if you remember one time you were at my place and, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to talk like an like an hour and a half or two hours. <laughs> no more energy. endless endless chats with the boss yeah, that you yeah. don't want to be talking to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So much mental space. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. I've gained like from not doing those anymore, you know. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, yeah, man. I mean. Yeah, that's all that's accurate. I mean, it's applicable to anything and everything, right? Like all of existence in terms of skill set development, like the, the tra- it's just the trajectory of life mm-hmm. itself. It's it's a it's a long game of exponential growth. Like mm-hmm. you know, like it will be. Everything does follow that exponential exponential pattern, yeah. because like over that long period of involvement in something, mm. like inevitably you hit that tipping point, right. and it becomes it's like eternal from there like you you've locked it in almost that's kind of like how you've seen it you know i mean it still may cycle in in another way again not that you can't fall off the wheel at a certain point but sure i do feel like yeah it becomes like almost like a muscle memory an energetic memory when Mm -hmm. you develop some of these core elements and especially when we're talking about like spiritual qualities or virtues or abilities like when you really cultivate them over a long period through like extended practice and involvement and engagement and and uh, patience, it's like you're on some level impenetrable, you know. Yeah. Like in terms of your strength, like yeah. I mean, you need that humility forever because you course. can always fall. But um, it's it's funny that you say that word because one of the things that I journal for myself recently is that um, peace is is way more about resilience than protection mm. of your environment and reality mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know what i mean like <laughs> true we, that yeah right yeah <laughs> we see so many people or at least i know so many people that like in the spiritual community and i have so much compassion towards it because in a sense i know where it's coming from where they want to curate their reality and their environment so much and protect it you know like they'll they'll move to the town to to be away from noise pollution and, mm-hmm. and live in peace all the time and uh i get where that comes from because when you awaken your senses get heightened so much so you get so sensitive mm-hmm. right where you feel everything so much more right like uh um i don't know some some person was rude to you or you had some fallout with a a, a, a friend or things like that. things hurt way more when you awaken because Mm -hmm. what you're awakening to is your emotions and your senses. So that becomes heightened. So I, I I have so much compassion towards that, that they want that they do want to go to, they're like, screw all this. I'm going to a town where everybody's peaceful and this is the environment and blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's not rooted in, um, I guess what they call in what I've heard is like the, uh, strengthening by tapasya or tapaya or something like that. It's, mm. it's, it's like strengthening by fire. Tapas, is tapas. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. in yogic cult. Yeah, it's a, yes. yeah, yogic practice. Yeah. It's like us the practices of austerity or fasting, renunciation. Like yes. it's it's a it's it's not just that, but it's a pra- It's a, the practice of yeah, burning in the flame, essentially mm-hmm. a practice of engaged. You know, uh, you know, yeah, like an environment that's not so conducive to this or that yeah you know it's like um yeah 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 pa- tapas that's a really that's a term i journaled on often because i remember um well there was this one yogi master uh i think his name was shiva bali yogi and he was known to have meditated for 12 years 20 uh, 23 hours a day well eight years 23 hours a day and then he oh, did okay. uh he did he did four years uh eight uh 12 hours a day Okay. And uh, to the point where his fingers, I think we talked about this before, his yeah, fing- fingers were locked, yeah. but he was big on, on top of like the idea of like an, in, like a purifying flame to the nth degree, yeah. you know, which he demonstrated, yeah. but you can do it in like, yeah, you can do it in a household life, like right. having a family yeah. or working a job. Like there's so many ways to do that. You're just engaging essentially what's, you're, you're just engaging discomfort. Yes. 
like consistently. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's really like uh, what peace is. It's 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 more of that resilience because you've engaged that discomfort, so that that discomfort no longer causes uh, as it, a, agitation within. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like you see the ugly thing or you experience the ugly thing, yet you are still unbothered, still, uh, there's a, a scratch on your soul. Yeah, yeah, sense. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, that's potent. Well, I, I definitely, I definitely view that on both ends, you know, in the sense that like, I think there's a natural desire to be around pristine environments or like, uh, mm. like natural environments that reflect the energy of you. But right. if everything is also God, then like cities are also that, yeah, like yeah. nature, you know, yeah, like a hundred percent, everything is 100%. made of nature essentially. Yeah. I've, I've been thinking about moving to a, a bigger city recently mm. and uh, some of the reactions I get, like, why would you want to go into the matrix and into, and I'm like, I don't really like to see it that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, um, um, at, at the end of the day, it's about creating your own matrix whatever way that you see it mm -hmm. right and then you can create that anywhere mm -hmm. so uh unplugging from the matrix can happen anywhere anytime any place um because you're simply like just unplugging your mind and thinking in your own way mm -hmm. rather than thinking how everybody else is thinking yeah yeah and that can happen um very spontaneously too i've had some kid message me who told me like i was just out on a walk and and that's how I awakened. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn. <laughs> I just got McDonald's. I was walking down the street. It's like, I just awakened. Was, yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. No, I feel you on that. I mean, I uh, I think not all cities are made alike. You know, I think there's some sure. cities that have like um, energy about them that are just like really potent, you know? Yeah. Versus others, it's just, it's like a death, death center kind of thing. Yeah. But the core of the the core of the focus of yeah like you, <laughs> you are yeah you, you, you're unplugged wherever you are you know what i mean yes it's, i mean this Cardano maraj was known to like he was one of the greatest non-dual teachers of our modern day and he awakened in three years of intensive practice living in the center of mumbai which is like the biggest one of the oh, cities really? on That's earth the biggest uh thanks for the yeah. <laughs> right it's, the, it's like the most chaotic city ever that's it and right. so like that was it i always reflect with that and i, I a woman I know, a good mentor and friend, um, sent me this uh, this uh, documentary about I forget what the the term what they use. Oh, it's like a, I think it's babukshas of uh, Russia or babukshas of Chernobyl. The babukshas of Chernobyl. I may be messing up the term, but babucha I think is a term for a grandmother, okay, or, or you know, elder woman, and. Um, and uh, it, it was about this period in Chernobyl where that was like the nuclear reaction thing that happened and everyone had to evacuate, right? Mm -hmm. And like they weren't letting anyone come back or they were just highly recommending no one to go back. And um, and because the, literally like the meters everywhere were saying like the radiation was at like death levels, you know, like wow. the water was black, like everything, like they science on paper would say you go there, you're going to die within a couple of weeks or mm -hmm. like months or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But these grandmothers who grew up their whole life there and were farmers there and in that area, they all like wouldn't leave or like mm -hmm. they got kicked out, but they went back and then they all started like creating their homes again and making their farms while everyone was saying like, you got to leave, like you're going to die. And then the whole story was about like the resilience of these women right. that uh, like they have nothing like they would they would put the meters like in their home and be like off the charts radiation. And these women are like smiling and making their food and wow. like who knows you know what maybe maybe they died a bit early or whatever but like still these women are like in their 80s yeah and everyone else is dipped the scene and afraid yeah and then these women are like right in the thick of it mm -hmm. and i i just thought it was so reflective of the times you know we're in now where yeah like most people want to who are awaking want to get out of the cities or yes. you know and for practical measures and i think it's a good a smart decision on in certain scenarios right sure. but yeah but there's also that awareness too of like well this one guy who's like a off gridder type homestead preparing mm. for you know all the shit uh he was giving the example of like 
in the times to come, it's either going to be that homesteader who has like a, uh, like a, you know, um, like a like a home base and like it's protected has the solar panels has everything ready and you're going to be like locked in Mm -hmm. but you could also be that like biker dude you know or woman like you know who's like going from place to place and able to kind of like go in and out all these things and obviously there's everyone in between but i I just thought that was an interesting reflection and the idea that yeah like there's no one way in terms of like how you're navigating your path especially right, post-awakening kind of or how, yeah when yeah. you when you really have come to a knowing about things then yes everything can transform right you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't know it's like it's the same in nutrition world like i could be i could be feeling shitty after a whole raw meal mm-hmm. or i could fe- be feeling blissed out while yeah. i'm eating some indian food like it's yeah, it's yeah, there's yeah, not yeah, one yeah. you know and and the more you have tapped into that true energy like the true flows of that you know source mm-hmm. energy like a lot of those rules just kind of go out the window if not all the rules mm-hmm. kind of go out the window i mean mm-hmm. gravity and things maybe yeah. stick around but <laughs> gravity yeah you know, sure. who knows <laughs> <laughs> levitating that's, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah um and a lot of it is uh um also i, I think like post awakening what happens is uh, is also like the biggest thing is the non-duality of being okay without being okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think that's huge, and that's what really can make you. That's what that's how you can like afford, in a sense, to be anywhere, in, in any place, and still be yeah be okay. Yeah, yeah. There's there's no inner turmoil going yes. on. So yes, whatever the circumstance, you're willing to do what's necessary. Right. That's the way I see it. Yeah, yeah, because. And if anything, that's, that's how like the most like long-term growth just continues. Like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, you're awakened, but then there's like endless continual lessons and experiences that are to be had mm-hmm. and primarily to be had within the realm of discomfort. But right. now, now there's a willingness to explore the discomfort maybe even more than ever right? because of that, you know, yeah. the inner turmoil is like kind of washed away yeah. or it fizzles out, kind of balances and then comes back to like, Oh yeah, like it's all the same actually, and you know, I mean that's how I've experienced a lot of strong emotion. Like if I've, you know, past five years, or whatever, had a, a crying session or something, it's like you're feeling like all the emotions at the same time. I'm feeling mm. like joy and sadness like simultaneously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Versus yeah, yeah. like, yeah, like okay, I'm feeling sad and then the attachment and identity with sadness, right, which limits the ability to actually feel a joyfulness at the same time. Yeah. 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 yeah you know yeah. what I mean? It's for it's yeah. Yeah, I've actually noticed that within myself uh, as well. It's like whenever I'm in a let's say I'm in an uncomfortable environment and I'm feeling like the heaviness of it or whatever, you know, and um, um, and then I like leave the environment almost like naturally. I just start laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh-huh. and and it's it's not like this uncomfortable laugh that you. Oh, I just gotta, you know, trick myself to feel better or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's just not something that like naturally like flows out, mm. uh, from, I guess the release or something. And, and, and it feels like everything at the same time. You the know? release. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. The, like all the emotions are coming out at the same time mm-hmm. and it's laughter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's very bizarre in that sense because I wasn't in a pleasant place. Sure, sure. Right? Um, but yet the release is laughter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ollie's into laughter yoga now. <laughs> is, is that a thing? <laughs> I was just being a typical spiritual person having, yeah. having to put some label on it. Every yeah. Time. Oh, it's a... You've just been doing some some uh, laughter yoga, Yogi. Uh, Ollie. Oh, dang. Guru Ali. <laughs> Guru Ali. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yo, oh. have you enjoyed this podcast? Well, I hope everyone has. I think it was a great discussion so far. Yeah. This is our outro to the podcast. Neo <laughs> in the window protecting us. It's a good yeah. episode. Like, yeah. like, comment, subscribe. Go check Ali out on the, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, on his Instagram and Facebook yeah. or wherever. But uh, till next time, yeah. Cool. Dope.